Welcome to another session with the Butterfly Transformational Experience Group. My name is Fola Afalabi, and I am a licensed MSW, self-confidence coach. And the motto of the group is when you know better, you do better. And if you're watching a replay of this video, please comment below replay. This program is now posting on Fuller Creative Coaching on YouTube. Yay! You know, it took me a whole year for me to set up my YouTube channel. Today's topic is, there are two ways of meeting difficulties. You alter the difficulties or you alter yourself to meet them. As you know, with all of my video sessions, I like to provide a definition of the terms that are being discussed on the video so that everybody is on the same wavelength. As you know, you know, let me say it again. As you know, with all of my video sessions, I like to provide a definition of the term being discussed in the video so that everybody is on the same wavelength. Difficulties, according to the Webster Dictionary, is a task or something that's hard to do, deal with, or understand. It can be a discomfort, hurdle, or obstacle. That's the definition of difficulty. It's something that is hard to complete. It's hard to do or it's hard to comprehend. That is what difficulty is. As you know, with all of my videos, you often heard me say, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. I say I make the sweetest lemonade. This is another perspective on how an individual should tackle any difficulties or obstacle that he or she is currently facing. We all go through some sort of difficulties one way or another. This video, this video will provide valuable insight on how one can be able to overcome difficulties in their lives. I also wanted to point to you that not every difficulty that one goes through is, is, um, has a magic solution. Like it can just disappear like that. There are some difficulties and some hardship that takes time for us to be able to overcome it. But you eventually are able to overcome the difficulty or the hardship based on the uh, concept that I'm going to introduce to you in the video later. And I wish I had a magic wand. I wish I had a magic wand that I'll be able to uh, make all our difficulties disappear but that is not going to do us any justice because it's through our difficulties that we learn valuable lessons about ourselves if we don't go through these difficulties we won't be our better we, we won't be the best um the best individuals that we can be so we all have to go through our difficulty our hardship in order for us to reach our um our goal our potential you know, if you don't go through something, you will never, you know, you never appreciate things unless you go through something. You know, if you get things given to you very easily, you tend to discard it. But with things that you get, that you go through, that you know you have to struggle for, you tend to appreciate it more. So that's what difficulty does into our life. It brings valuable um, lessons that we all need to learn from. That we all need to learn from. So, what are the um, four? I'm going to talk about four concepts on how to overcome difficulties in your life. Um, there are more um, concepts in the world, but I'm just going to talk about four concepts that I believe is essential for individuals in overcoming their difficulties or hardship. The first, the first um, concept is changing your mindset. See if you can approach the um, the situation from a different angle. Look at uh, different ways of how you can tackle the situation at hand. And there's sometimes that you might have to uh, seek out guidance from others. You know, they can provide you with valuable um, insight on how for you to overcome 
your situation. Not everybody. I just also want to point out that not everybody you can talk to. You know, you have to be very careful who you you disclose your personal feelings about a certain situation about. Um, you have to be very mindful because some certain people um, might not be able to see what you're seeing or maybe they have a negative perspective on life. So you have to be very mindful on who you decide to talk about with, with your problems. You have to be very mindful about that, you know, because you don't want to uh, make a decision based on wrong advice. And that is causing a lot of ha hardship, you know. I know what it's like to get different uh, wrong advice from people and I end up hurting myself. So you have to change your mindset, but also be able to um, find individuals that you can talk to that will give you positive um, guidance. People that are trustworthy, you know, even trustworthy people, you have to be able to know, are they knowledgeable in the area that you are discussing, uh, you, you're talking to about, you know, so you have to be very mindful. At the end of the day, you still have to make the final decision. So you have to have a positive uh, mindset, change your mindset, being open-minded, don't be narrow, don't be uh, focused on one thing. Be, be able to look at a uh, situation from different angle, you know, open your mind to other poss possibilities. Another uh, second thing is changing your environment, removing yourself from the situation, if applicable. Um, say if you got into an argument with your, your boss or your coworker and they made you very, very angry and they causing difficulty on your job. Remove yourself from the situation for that moment. It's temporary. Remove yourself. Go out for a walk. Take a breather. Go to a different floor. Talk with your visit friends or co-workers on a different floor. If you, you know, just to keep your, you know, just to keep your energy flowing and for you to be able to, um, to see situation, you know, because sometimes when we, in a situation where it's, you know that situation is clouding our judgment so you have to be able to remove yourself from the environment that's causing you that difficulty or hardship anything remove yourself and thirdly which is the most important one is you got to be accountable look at the situation at hand look at the difficulties see if is the difficulty caused by your own doing is it caused by your own doing? And if it did, see how can you rectify the situation? You know, we are all humans. We are bound to make mistakes. You have to own up to your faults. In order for us to be our better self, we have to own up to our, uh, our faults. Even me, like if I somebody points out something to me, I will look at the situation and see if anywhere, if I can make the situation better. And if it's, if I happen to have a hand in the, you know, me causing the difficulty, then I have to own up to it. Be the bigger person. You know, once you own up to your faults, you, you're able to reach your goal. But this is a situation that I find that a lot of people in this world, they don't want to be accountable for anything. They always want to put the blame on somebody else. You got to be accountable. In order for you to be able to move through your difficulty, you have to be able to hold yourself accountable. Be accountable. Be, you know, be accountable. You have to be able to, uh, uh, you know, account for your own efforts. What, are, what is your part in the, in the situation at hand? And there's some situation where you don't have any um, doing or you don't even have any control with. So you leave that, leave it at that. But you got to be uh, accountable. And lastly, like I said, with the change in your mindset, you have to be able to develop new techniques and skills. Remember that the skills that you learn to deal with yesterday's problem is not applicable to today's problems. 
okay? The skills that you learned yesterday is not applicable to be, to solve today's uh, issue at hand. You know, it might require a different angle. It might just, uh, require a different perspective. So you have to be willing and open to learn new techniques and skills to deal with issues, okay? That's how we grow. That's how we become our better self. And I'm going to talk about three individuals who um, who use these concepts on um, on helping on, on how who use these concepts in dealing with their difficulties. Okay, I'm going to talk about one person from the um, business world, one person from the sports world, and one person from the ent entertainment field. He's well; they, they're all well known. The business person is not, um, he's, his business is well known around the world. Um, the first person I'm going to talk about is the, the founder of Kinko's. His name is Paul Ofa uh, Ofalia. Uh, Ofalia had a very, very difficult childhood coming up because he was um, suffering from undiagnosed ADHD, attention deficit, hyper disorder, and dyslexia. He had difficulty reading and writing. He was not able to comprehend whatever he was reading in school. But the funny thing enough is that he was, despite his situation, he was able to complete his undergrad studies. Even after graduating from college, Mr. Of uh, Ofalia had difficulties holding down a job. He couldn't hold down a job because he was not being able to comprehend the task before him. That's due to his dyslexia and his ADHD. But yet, he did not allow his situation, his condition, his difficulty to affect him in reaching his goal. He saw that there was a niche that needed to be addressed, especially with college students. So he asked his father to co-sign a loan for him to open up a business because of his inability to keep a job. So he developed, he saw there was a skill and he saw that there was a need that needed to be addressed with college students. So he opened up a, a venue near um, the University of California at Santa Barbara. And the place where the business that he opened up was contains a copy machine and resources geared towards college students because the resources that especially when it comes to resources that were available for college students was basically at the uh school library especially when it comes to making copies so he made sure that he had a copy machine at his venue that will be able to um, provide a need for the students so that they'll be able to make copies without them having to go all the way across town campus looking for uh, at the library to make copies. And he also made the, um, the prices of his products was uh, affordable for the students. The copies at that time in the 1970s was four four cents per copy he was selling notebooks pens what have you anything that will you know that would get towards the college student he made it available for them and he also made it at an affordable price that they'd be able to afford it remember college students didn't have that money so the money that they had he was able he was able to he was able to you know set prices that they was affordable to them And eventually, he started becoming popular with other college students. He started um, opening up other branches of Kinko's around college campuses that were geared towards college students. And, you know, with the copy machine, with the notebook and stuff like that. And also, it expanded to um, college students that was looking for work or resume. 
So the copy machine, you know, we were doing copy machine and also he expanded to other areas. As he was opening up different branches all, uh, all over the country, especially in the West Coast, he, he was able to develop a partnership with them. And they had an interest in their um in the business so not only was the um was he had he owned the kinkos but the people that was um he was partnershiping with became kono owners of the um of the business so they both had an interest in the business succeeded and they was also making money and the people that became co-owners of kinkos at that time were part-time college students so at that time, they was also making money. So they have no other choice but to make the business successful because they was benefiting their pockets as well. And that's how eventually Kinko's became a worldwide sensation. Now, Kinko's right now is part of FedEx. And the funny thing about it is that the owner of Kinko's eventually has a high position at um at a university and it's so funny in that he had difficulty learning how to read and write but now he is an esteemed professor i believe at the university of california he has a high position and he's helping other people that have learning disabilities overcome their you know their difficulties within the educational field. So just imagine if Ophelia allowed his situation to cloud his judgment, he would not be where he is at now. But he, there was something within himself that he was able to push. He knew that he had, um, he knew that he had something in him that he wanted to um uh, share with the world but his difficulties it wasn't allowing him to succeed but he didn't allow it to uh weigh him down that like he found other avenues on how he was able to overcome his difficulties and he knew that based on his difficulties and his hardship that he needed others to succeed he needed you know the partnership networking which is how why his business model is succeed success became a success because he was able to uh, um, develop valuable relationship which turned to which turned into networking with other business owners and then that's how he made a name for himself the second um person that i'm talking about is mike piazza Mike Piazza was drafted into the MLB. He was in the minor leagues in 1988. And he was actually one of the last individuals to be drafted into the MLB, uh, MLB in 1998. But you know, the funny thing with Mike Piazza is that when he was drafted into MLB, he was drafted as a first line baseman. And at that time, the people that was in the, you know, that was the scout at those time, they looked at his game and he saw that Mike Piazza game was not up to par. So the person that got him into the MLB, Tommy Lasorda, uh, um, advised Mike Piazza for him to go into, to change his position. I guess he didn't tell him that, you know, that his game sucked, but he advised uh, Mike Piazza that in order for him to be picked by other major league um, teams, that he has to change his position. So he advised Mike Piazza to learn to change his position and to go for training as a catcher in Santa uh, um, Dominican, and the Dominican Republic. He went to a training class, training uh, session for catchers. And from there, Mike Piazza found his uh, niche. He found his niche. And then in 1992, he was able to be drafted into 
the major league baseball as a catcher and then that same year he won his a rookie award for for catcher in 1992 so just imagine if he did not follow tommy lasota's advice about changing the position Tommy Lasorda saw uh, there was an, um, they, there was other areas that uh, Mike Piazza could uh, succeed in, and he advised him. What if Mike Piazza said, "I'm not. I just want to be a first baseline, baseman. I don't want to change. He won't be who he is today. And right now, Mike Piazza is a very prominent figure in the in the sports world. You know, as a catcher, he. He played for several teams, and he became very famous. And the second and the third person that I'm going to talk about is Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry, as you know, I don't know if you know that he had a difficult childhood. And um, one day, I, I believe it was around the era, late 80s, when Oprah, when the Oprah Winfrey show was came out. He was watching the Oprah Winfrey show and he was watching the episode where people, when the individual was talking about, when the individual was talking about how writing can help an individual overcome their difficulties or deal with their hurt or emotional trauma. Um, in the social work world, that we call it narrative therapy. So he, he, he learned about writing as a, a technique in learning how to deal with his trauma from his childhood. And, you know, the funny thing is that as he was writing to himself, he slowly but surely started to overcome his trauma. And the letters that he was writing to himself became the basis of his first play, I Know I Have Been Changed, that came out in 1992. But unfortunately... When he um, wrote the stage play, I Know I've Been Changed, it was a flop. It took Tyler Perry six years for him to be able to reach some type of success with I Know I've Been Changed. From 1998, from 1992 to 1998 is when he became an overnight a sensation. But within those six years, he kept revising the play. He kept working at the craft. He kept seeing where he could make it better. He kept, you know, working at it. He kept doing stuff, fine-tuning it. So he, you know, he didn't just stop at the play. Because usually when one person has a flop, you will say, oh, the show did not garner success. Everything was a bad review. Every you know was re, re, uh, bad reviews everywhere. But that same play that he created in 1992, based on his letters that he wrote to himself, gathered gathered him success in 1998. And then from 1998, he became a world who uh, a world. Uh, no, he became well known, uh, well known in the household, especially in the African American community. I mean, I knew of Tyler Perry when I came, when I was working, and when I started my first job. So, and I knew about his stage play, but I was shocked to know that he started writing the same play that he got famous for. He was working for it on it for over six years so six good years long years for him to be able to garner success but i just wanted to point out to you that these three individuals they they kept at their craft they saw they had their difficulty they didn't let their difficulty take over them they all they changed their difficulties they were able to change the difficulties and and make it work for them and make it work for them you know tyler perry like you know you know part of the day you alter yourself to meet them he kept working at the play he kept revising the play he revised and revised until he 
fine tune or he was able to gather the success that he was looking for. So this is just a, uh, uh, what is it? I'm just giving you a, a nugget, a daily nugget, you know, a positive a reinforcement that you just got to keep at doing what you have to do. If something is not success, it's not um, working for you right now, just keep at it until you gather success. Look at the situation where you can fine tune whatever you have to do. Okay, until you reach your goal that you're looking for, you know. And if you want to reach me, you can always reach me via YouTube, Facebook, or at Fuller at Fuller Creative Coaching.com. I'll be looking forward to seeing you at the next next live session. Bye. Okay.